Hi everyone. So welcome to the today's webinar and uh, our topic for the today's webinar is API provisioning and promotion through CICD process. So, so today's webinar uh, will be conducted by me and Malinte. So I am Kasun Tenakon, an associate tech lead at WSO2 and uh, Malinte also joining with me here uh, and he's also associate tech lead at WSO2 and we are both working in uh, API management API manager team uh, in WSO2. So here is our agenda for today's webinar. So we will first uh, do a brief introduction to what is CICD and why CICD in API management, why we need CICD in API management, and then we uh, go through the uh, challenges. What are the challenges in uh, API management CICD process when, when we come to implementing new uh, CICD process in API management platform, what are the challenges that we face with? And then uh, we will uh, introduce, introduce you uh, the WSO2 API controller, and sorry, and uh, we will uh, explain you what is WSO2 API controller and why do we need it? And how this API controller going to fit into this CICD process in the API management platform? And then, um, we will do a small demonstration on the API control basic functionalities, and then we will be move on to a demonstration using the API controller, how we can provision the APIs and promote using API controller. And during that demonstration, we will show you how to configure GitHub and Jenkins, and then we will walk you through the automation process. So let's get started. Right, so first of all, what is CICD? So in CICD, CI stands for continuous integration and CD stands for continuous de deployment and delivery. So continuous integration means, so in today's world, a lot of, lot, lot of time with the strategy of the application developer, not only API, is to optimize the developer time because it is very important. So when that come to play, like a uh, lot of parallel deployment, development are happening. So we need to make sure that all the changes that are going through the shared source code are up to the standard and up to uh, are following the all the QA, uh, QA rules. And uh, we, we want to make sure that uh, before someone committing their changes or introducing their new feature to the product, we need to make sure that it is up to the standards of the uh, of our software project. So in the continuous integration, what we normally do is, <coughs> sorry, the pattern is we before we commit in our changes to the um, shared code base, we run test and we validate that that new change doesn't break any existing features in the product. And uh, in the continuous deployment or the CD part is continuous deployment and continuous delivery. So we want to make sure that the new changes or, or rather we want to uh, push the new changes to the to the production as soon as possible. So in delays between the actual development time and the deployment would, may, would, would incur some cost because time is very important. And while doing that, like while uh, improving the uh, while delivering it fast, we, we want to make sure that our code is and our software is up to up to the quality standards. So this CICD process is not only applicable for uh, software development and like API development and any other like software based development. This continuous integration and continuous delivery and deployment is very important. So here this is a uh, this is a very generic uh, flow in the CICD process. So we start with the de development and then we commit the changes and then we push the changes to the uh, source control system, so for example, GitHub. And then there we, before merging it, uh, we validate the changes and we test it. We test the changes against the existing code base and then we merge it. If it's if, it, if the test passes, then we merge the code and then move the code to the test environment or test deployment. And then we 
trigger a test on the uh, test deployment and then if all goes well if test all the tests are passing and if that new chain doesn't make any like breaking breaking impact on the existing features then we continue with the deployment and we deploy the uh, new version or new change to the production so this is the very generic uh, CICD flow and let's see why CICD in API management is important so as I said before, we need to we need to make the development process and the uh, the propagation or the uh, promotion of the changes to the higher level. So we, we we want to get the changes to the production and make it available to the customer as soon as possible. So the delays would like uh, would impact on ne negative on financial side of your business. So we we want to make that fast while making sure that okay this change is up to our quality standards and uh, so so rapid development so CSED in API management will help you to do rapid development and deployment of APIs and less human interruption so your developer can focus on your like implementing your business logic and they could uh, simply commit the changes to the source control system and then they onwards the CSED process will take like take on and uh, make sure that the code is up to the quality standards and if it is if it passes the standard then it will um, propagate through the through the process and uh, ultimately go to the production if not the, the developer will notify will get notified and he could uh, like make the necessary changes and then commit it back so fast delivered to end user so because of this uh, because we are uh, reducing the amount of manual work uh, by like introducing CICD pipeline so it, it makes it a fast delivery to your actual end user so you develop APIs and you like um, and they and you have some applications that are depending on API and you make sure that your API get to the production state as as quick as possible so your like application developers can start on start working on that and this is time saving and efficient so again the same uh, same point and detect issues very early because uh, now if, if, if uh, let's suppose that if there is no CICD process implemented then you have to test it manually in your environment in your local machine and it, it might not be the best or the very performant environment but we can uh, have a very uh, like with the um, high hardware specs and uh, give a uh, like make make your test environment uh, to run run the uh, testing uh, things smoothly and uh, so instead of running the test the entire test um, layers in your local machine which is uh, very optimal to run it in a test environment and get the test run and so you get the if you if, if you if there is an issue so you get it notified very quickly so then so so uh, as you can see now there are a lot of advantages in implementing a CI/CD pipeline in api api development uh, environment but it is not very smooth and there are some challenges so as i said earlier like uh, the important of the CICD process comes when there are a lot of development happening uh, parallelly. Like you have an open API definition, or you are uh, you have uh, several departments which are contributing to same uh, API definition. And so, for example, a chart department could introduce one operation to the API definition, and the finance department could in introduce it, like at their own uh, operations and the legal department. So like a lot of uh, dynamic things are added like the development is very um, dynamic so then you you want to make sure that those none of those changes will in like will add any errors or add any uh, breaking changes to your um, stable releases or stable uh, software pack. so you need to include this continuous integration in this process and then uh, you need to implement a continuous delivery and deployment process to push it through the uh, environments and push it to the production environment 
so this is this is not uh, like unless you have implemented a smooth and uh, like efficient CI/CD process, this is uh, this is will soon become a mess. Like in in fact, there is a term called integration hell. Like uh, if, if you haven't uh, implemented a good uh, CI/CD pipeline, then you will end up in a mess. Like uh, developers would introduce some changes that are not compatible with someone else's uh, feature, and things will go very very um, bad way so with api manager so if your api management platform is on wso2 api manager we have a, a tool called api controller which helps you to implement a smooth and very efficient cicd pipeline so the api controller is let me go through the basic features of it so it's basically a, when we say wso2 API controller is a command line tool and it is written in Go language and we have uh, we have distributed like we have provided binaries for all the major operating systems and uh, it is capable of injecting environment related configurations when it is running and it is easy to configure with many CI CD tools. So so how 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 can we get started with the uh, like implementing a CI/CD process with WSO2 API Manager. So first of all, you you will need the process orchestration tool such as Jenkins uh, to implement this uh, CI/CD pipeline. So it's a key requirement. Uh, but there are like a lot of tools out there like Circle CI and uh, even in uh, GitHub they have workflows. And then uh, you need a, a source port management system HCM uh, so for example GitHub or you can use GitLab or anything like that you need a source code management system so we are doing uh, some demonstrations here to how, how you can use API controller to build up CI/CD pipelines so there we will be using Jenkins as our process orchestration tool and we will be using GitHub as the source code management tool and of course you need api controller so you can uh, put the or you can use api controller in this this process to automate the uh, cicd process so the task of the api controller is actually it's, it provide a way to interact with the api manager deployments or the api manager server and you can manage you can deploy you can uh, import export apis and you can uh, even migrate applications and there are a lot of things that you can do with the API controller. So since it is a CLI tool, so you can like smoothly uh, use that tool, API controller, to build up Jenkins process, Jenkins job, or, or any other um, CICD tools. So let's, uh, let's go to the demo. And I will be showing the basic functionalities in API controller. And followed by this demo, uh, Malinta will show you how we can uh, build up an entire CI/CD process using the API controller. So let's move to the demonstration. For this demonstration, so we have uh, updated, uploaded uh, our lab kit uh, artifact into uh, WSO2 Labs repository. We will be sharing this uh, repository with you all uh, right after this. Uh, webinar so here so first of all you need to get the api manage so you need to get the uh, api manager controller tool so you can go to wso2.com slash api management slash tooling and there we have this uh, devop tooling so this this is the uh, wso2 api control and this is the developer studio which we will not be using this in uh, this demonstration but it is also comes handy if you want to like uh, add new like develop in new uh, integrations and uh, things like that so you can uh, choose your platform here and download the api controller so i have already done that so uh, so if you after you downloading you need to you, you need to make sure to add it to the uh, executables path and you will get a command like api cta and so I'm using the latest version. So our latest version is 3.1.3, so which I'm using now. 
So after you installing it, uh, you will get the command apxctl and can just uh, type apxctl version to make sure that it is uh, installed correctly and run. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, lab kit. Yeah, so first I will add a new environment to the API kit CDL or the API controller to add a new environment or this is like a register in a new environment. So I will copy the command from here and explain to you. So let's paste it. So the tool tool is API controller and the command we are executing now is add environment and uh, dash e provided followed by dash e then you have to give the environment name so i have give, given the environment name as ctl dash demo and then we need to give the api manager origin so we, we have set up uh, api manager instance in this uh, api and demo dot aldonica.com and then we have to <coughs> sorry uh, then we have to give the token endpoint uh, to fetch retrieve a token to generate a token to talk with this uh, API manager instance. So let's go ahead and enter. So okay, so now we have successfully added environment CTL demo. Okay, let's continue. So you need to first uh, register an environment and then we will initiate an uh, uh, API project. So let me copy this one and I will explain you the uh, parts in the command. Okay, so now API CTL and then uh, we have this init command and followed by we have to give a project name. So here I have used a project name as mobile store. And then we need to give the open API specification URL or we can even give the file as well. So here I have used this uh, I have used this sample uh, mobile store 1.0 OS, the open API definition. And uh, then I have used this parameter initial state as publish. So what does this do is like uh, when we initiate this project, the project A or the API contained in, the pro in this project, in this mobile store project will be initialized with the, with the initial state as published. So in, in our last webinar, uh, where we discussed about the API lifecycle state and the state lifecycle management. So we, we have discussed about this published state. So we have like about six state in the uh, API WSO2 API manager. So published is where we, the API consumer can consume the API from the developer portal. So let's go ahead and initialize the project. Okay, now we have initialized the API project. So, okay, so mobile store is our new API project. Let me move it to actually this uh, mobile store to demo. Uh, demo. Okay, so let's go to demo. And okay, okay, now it's now it's clear. So now this is the mobile store is our API project. Let me open it with uh, VS Code and show you the project structure. So, so this is the project structure just after initializing the project. So we have uh, docs directory. So currently there are no any documents here and we, we have this image directory. You can put uh, image thumbnail or API thumbnail image here and you can put the like uh, API documentations here. And these interceptors are for micro gateway purposes and libs are also for micro gateway projects. And we have meta information and there we have this API ML. So this API ML contains the meta information about the API. So I, I have mentioned about the initial state. So since we have initialized the project with the published state or project initial state as published. So this status is now published. So and then uh, we have this swagger yaml this is the swagger that we have uh, imported or the uh, used when creating this api project and then moving forward we have the sequences directly they are uh, again since this is 
uh, a newly created project we don't have anything in the sequences directory but you can put uh, in sequence out sequence if you want to do any mediation like modifications to the inbound request or outgoing request so you can uh, write down uh, synapse uh, sequences here and put it put it in the uh, in sequence or out sequence or false sequence directories and then we have uh, api params so here we can we can uh, specify any parameter that we want to override in particular environment so in, when i'm registering environment uh, yeah so here i have registered a ctl demo environment so that's why uh, it, it, uh, the in this environment array the it has uh, default default environment as ctl demo so you can register like any number of environments through the api ctl and when you like when, when you uh, like if you want to override any parameter when you uh, import this api to the ctl demo environment or any other environments that you have registered you can specify those values here like for example when we say endpoint production this is the end this is this should be the endpoint url for this uh, ctl demo ctl demo environment uh, production endpoint like that so let me uh, add a sample production endpoint here so now we have Sorry. Um, sorry. Okay. Okay. Clear that. So now I, I have added, added an environment and I have initialized the project. And then uh, I will give this as the production URL for this environment. So I will put it like this and I will specify the sandbox environment as well. Paste it. Okay. So, so what happens now is when I import this API to CTL demo environment, it will inject or it will override the API production URL, production endpoint as this. And uh, I can specify another environment here and say, okay, if I import this API to this environment, uh, make this API's production URL this. The, the the whatever the url you provide there so the, like that we can uh, we can override the api ml information or api meta information for each and every environment that we have registered in the api controller by uh, overriding the parameters in this para api params uh, configuration file okay now we have updated the uh, production and sandbox so let's import api so to import api we need to execute this command uh, we'll paste it so importing is uh, we are so this import is from the uh, server's perspective so we are importing an api to this uh, to the api manager server which is running in this ctl demo environment so uh, the command the tool is api ctl and the command is import api and then we specify the environment ctl demo uh, and we provide the uh, project uh, project uh, directory and this is to uh, ignore the uh, certificate issues and then we ignore the uh, certificate validations and then when we are invoking the api and then uh, we specify to update the uh, update the parameters so let execute it so here uh, it asks for a username and password to authenticate the user to this uh, ctl demo environment so uh, we have set up a user called david so i will use the username as david and now we provide the password and okay so now we have successfully imported this api to uh, ctl demo environment so let, uh, let's go to that environment and see how the api is uh, um, api has imported there so i will i'll do some name david oh, oh, david okay david. 
Right. So now you can see the API in this uh, uh, in this uh, demo environment, which is a CTL demo. So when I'm registering the environment, I have specified this uh, origin. So I have logged into that. Uh, I have logged into the publisher portal in the API demo environment. So now you can see the API here. And if you go to the life cycle, so now it is in published state. Okay. Now, uh, okay. Now I will generate API keys from the API controller and show you uh, and invoke the API and show you, show you how it works. So now this command allow us to generate an um, access token against this API or what it does is actually it create create an application and then uh, subscribe this API to sorry that application and it generate an access token for us and uh, provide it in the response. So when, when, we, when I press enter, so you can see that we are getting an access token from the API CTA. So we can use this access token to like execute test uh, script or use it, use this access token in test script to validate the uh, behavior of the API and we can use this in various ways that we want to invoke the API. So let's uh, invoke this API and see the response. So let me copy this one. Curl command uh, and okay. Okay, so there's a mistake in the uh, double four. Okay, let me copy and Paste this. Right now we are getting the response from the API. So we, we got this response from the API, and, and now we know that okay, API is running uh, running good in the uh, in, in our environment. So let's go back to the API, and if I refresh the page, so it is in public state. So uh, in the in, in our last webinar, we have uh, introduced and we have gone go to all these uh, life cycle state uh, today we will not be going to all the state but uh, now uh, I will uh, show you how we can deprecate the API and finally retire the API and um, there, there, thereafter we can even delete the API from the API CT here so let me show you how it works so first we will deprecate the API uh, I will copy this command and paste it here let me clear the screen okay so now uh, now this command is api ctl and we are we are changing changing the status of this api to uh, deprecate state and the uh, project is mobile store and api name is mobile store uh, and the version is uh, 1.0 and environment is ctl demo so this uh, api controller will look for a for an API called mobile store with the version 1.0 and uh, change it lifecycle state to deprecate. So let's execute this. Okay, so mobile API state has changed successfully. So let's go to the uh, publisher portal and see the state change. Okay, now it is in deprecated state. So similarly, I will uh, retire the API. So let's copy this and paste it here and now it's, it's similar to like it's same as the previous command so uh, the difference is this retired word in here so i will retire it okay now let's go to publisher and refresh the page okay now it is retired and to clean up the things i will delete this api as well so as you can see now we can do like the entire lifecycle management through the API control, API controller, and even we can uh, fetch the, we can get uh, access tokens to like uh, use it, use the use use with uh, in the case script that we are running in the CI/CD pipeline, and uh, we can migrate applications, we can migrate uh, subscriptions, and we can do like a whole lot of things from the API controller itself. Okay, so finally to clean up the things, I will uh, delete the API. Let's copy this command and 
paste it. So, so this is not a lifecycle state chain. Now this is we are, we are directly um, asking to delete the API with the name this mobile store and the version 1.0 in this particular CTL demo environment. So let's execute it. Okay, now mobile store API deleted successfully. So if you go back to the publisher and refresh, we should get uh, kind of find the API. Right. Okay. So API is not found in the environment. So API is not there anymore. And so that is how you can use API CTL to manage the entire API lifecycle and migrate or push new APIs to the um, API and um, your your one of your API environments, and even you can uh, migrate the APIs through the environments using the API CTL. And now uh, we will go back to the presentation. So okay, so now we have covered the API CTL basics, and uh, let me invite Malinter to continue with the presentation on how we can use the API CTL to build up a CI/CD process and to automate provisioning and promotion of the APIs. Okay, uh, thank you, Kasun. So, uh, okay, uh, let me go to the left click first. So, uh, so we have added a diagram here, so that will represent our setup uh, for this CI/CD demonstration. So basically, we are following uh, uh, following an API first approach. So basically, uh, it's like uh, a developer is committing an API project to GitHub, and then uh, it will trigger a Jenkins pipeline, and and from from that they will be executing test uh, test and stuff, and uh, the the API project will be uh, promoted to the developer environment, and then. Uh, they will be executing tests, and then the API, if the tests are successful, the API will be promoted to front. So, so the, basically, they are will. Uh, so, as as I as, as I explained, there will be uh, two main environments. So, basically, we call them uh, devel developer called dev environment and front environment. And so, there will be another uh, instance, API manager instance inside the Jenkins. Uh, node so basically that is used by the jenkins for testing the api and stuff and then of course we have the api controller also installed on this instance right so uh okay so uh first of all right so um so let me log in to the jenkins uh instance first so i'm going to do an ssh for that to uh, show you some uh, api ctl details there so basically this is our jenkins instance so we uh, so we are, here we have installed api ctl tool and uh, so as uh, Kasun explained, also we have to do add some add environments to API CTL and is, and uh, introduce the environments to CTL in, before using them. So basically, here in API CTL, uh, uh, let me show you the environments that are installed here. Uh, so this is the command API CTL list begin with. So uh, this will show you three environments. So basically, the first one is the dev, and the, the last one is the prod. And also, there will be another environment so that uh, the, the Jenkins will use that one as a local kind of uh, environment for testing the. Uh, so basically, we will discuss about this. So we'll at the end uh, do some test uh, regarding the uh, regarding GitHub PRs. So so with that for that purpose, this uh, PR test environment will be used okay uh, right uh, now uh, let me show you the uh, github repository for uh, use so that we are using for this demo so it's basically this one sorry right 
so this is our repository that we are using for the demonstration so here we have uh, added this uh, added some files here so basically these the jenkins files we are we added here are used for use for the jenkins in, for the jenkins uh, pipelines and uh, again there will be some test cases added here and also uh, yeah so that's it and uh, right so so basically let's start with this uh, for that uh, let me log in it log in to this uh, repository from the uh, from this electronica ci administrator uh, so for that I am taking a new window. So basically I want to show you how the GitHub hooks are uh, configured for this. So that uh, whenever someone commits to this repo, they are, will uh, trigger, a, trigger a Jenkins instance, Jenkins pipeline. Uh, so I will use this uh, user that is the administrator of this repository. So if I sign in, so then I'll go to the settings. Uh, so here under webhooks, uh, we have added a webhook here. So basically this is the Jenkins URL. And there we have added this, just the push event. Push event uh, we, that, uh, so basically this, this uh, whenever someone do some pushes to this repository, they will be adding the it will do it will notify this uh, url and do and the, they are, that will be that will be used for uh, triggering a Jen, jenkins uh, pipeline okay so um, so i have not uh, yet configured the jenkins instant instance pipelines so let me do it first uh, so i'll go into the jenkins instance this is the url so I have this uh, CICD admin as the UR as the user. Okay, so um so here I am now going to add the new um new pipeline here and I'm let me name it as uh, like this. I'm making I'm making it a multi-bank pipeline and now I have to first uh, configure the github source code and I'm adding this uh, so I have already configured this uh, github uh, con credentials here and I'm using that and as the repository URL I'm using the uh, the repository URL of this repository this uh, github repository and uh, from this one i'm only uh, kind of interested in, interested in branch pushes so i'm removing this pull request related events related configurations and then here i'm doing all branches and do another filter uh, for the name so i'm only inter interested in master branch so i'm configuring into the, it like that and after that, I'm I have to give a Jenkins file for this pipeline. And for that, I have a Jenkins file here. So actually, there are two Jenkins files. So one is for analysis of PR. So I'll discuss that about that later. So for now, I'm adding this one only. Uh, so I have to give the relative part of this uh, file into this one. Right. And uh, I'm. So I'm, I think I'm done with this one. So let me double check and save. Right. So now it is uh, scanning this uh, repository. And uh, so it uh, shows that one branch was processed. So that is the, the master branch. Okay, so now, uh, so what I'm trying, now what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to push this project into this repository. Uh, okay. So here, so I don't have a project here. So I'm going to push this, push a project.
can click on it here. So I have already checked it, uh, check this mobile store CICD project in this one. And then, uh, so here I, I don't have the project now, but uh, so I have a project that is already created. So I'm going to move it here. So it's under this one. So it's uh, very similar to what uh, Kasun also created, uh, but uh, there are very small little changes regarding this uh, production and de uh, developer endpoint. So I'm uh, using that this one instead of using the, the one Kasun's create, Kasun has created. Right, so I am going to add this and this one. Right, then I'm going to push. Okay, so um, so I'm so I actually push to my personal account. So actually, it's Kasun. I'm using Kasun's laptop, so it's uh, uh, it's pushed to Kasun's account. Uh, so uh, okay. So actually, this one represent. Uh, a personal account that is, I mean, so actually it's a developer. So I'm, so as a developer, I'm not directly committing to my organization's repository. So that is why I have forked it and uh, without directly committing to the organization's repo, I'm com committing to my, the, the personal repo and then doing a pull request. So I'm doing a pull request now to the organization repository. And after that, let's see. Okay, so um, so I'm going to merge this now. All right. So uh, so basically, I uh, we have done we have did this one as uh, um, so actually as a as a listener for the master branch changes. So the GitHub has already done a, done a notification to this uh pipeline uh, because of that the gtube that i have configured so basically this uh, the log says that uh, it is executing that jenkins file and it has done done what the, the done the script that i already configured there so let me quickly go through the jenkins file that i showed to you so basically the con the one i configured is this one this jenkins file so basically it has a couple of stages. So the first stage is uh, it will de deploy the API to the dev environment. And so for that, it is using these two commands. And it is now, uh, after that it is doing running time sets, test suits. And so these test scripts are already added here. So basically if I do a new tab and, uh, and here we have these test scripts. So these are basically Postman scripts, and this uh, it is uh, run using the Newman command. And then uh, it is once the tests are successful, uh, it will the API will be migrated to the front environment from these commands. And then so these are actually API CTL commands, just like uh, Kasun showed to you. And then the API will be uh, tested in the production environment. So okay. So let me quickly go to the go to the go to those environments now. So basically I'm going to the dev environment. So here, uh, you'll be need as uh, David. I can show, uh, see that the API is uh, added to the dev environment. And then, uh, oh, sorry. So if I go to the front environment, so my code environment URL is this. So so I can see this API is already added there as well. Sorry. Okay. 
yes so so it's like this uh, right so let me do something again uh, so now I'm going to do some uh, kind of a uh, kind of a breaking change to this API and let's see what happens uh, so I'm doing taking, taking a, something like this so basically my test so basically what I'm going to do is uh, my tests are written so that it, it is actually invoking this uh, you are this uh, resource of the API. So basically, I'm going to do a change for this resource and going to commit it and see what happens now. So I'm going to do a short hand command for change. Um, so let's see. change. into the master branch of the personal network and now uh, so here I'm, i have this commit the breaking change commit and now i'm going to put it, create a pull request and merge it right so now let's see what happens. So basically, the, in the previous build, it, it, uh, it directly uh, run, ran the test cases and APIs was migrated to the dev and for both. So now let's see what happens. So already a build has been triggered. Now, so if you go to the console, uh, so this shows the logs. And now the API is already uh, API was first added to the developer environment. And now after that, the test suits are getting run. And uh, but then the test cases has been failed due to some. So because we, we did some changes to the API so that the test cases are break, break, broken. So so now, unlike the before, the, the next stage won't be run, then uh, the API won't be developed, uh, added to the product environment. So that is uh, what happens if you uh, so that is what that is the way uh, like so basically if someone do a breaking change it will it won't be propagated to the higher environments so so if you go to the dev environment uh, the api is here and with the change so this s is missing here but uh, in the product in the product environment if you refresh the page uh, the api will still have the older one because the, the the new one has we have done a break. We have broken the test case so that the, the build is failing. So now I'm uh, doing. Uh, so basically, uh, the problem with this one is so this in this case the 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 developer environment is kind of a inconsistent state. So that uh, so that develop so now the developer has to revert this commit and do uh, fix it again. So, so basically, it is better if you do if you do some improve, improvement for this, so that uh, uh, this is kind of uh, we we are not allowed to uh, uh, merge those kind of breaking PRs. So let me do another small uh, kind of uh, uh, fix to this Jenkins, so that I am going to do another add add another pipeline for the PR related ones. Uh, so I am. Uh, Adding a new one like uh, let me use this name and making it a multi band pipeline. And uh, for this, I am doing the same sources uh, with the uh, same credentials. And now, unlike before, I am. I'm only interested in uh, the PRs, so I'm removing the the branches related configurations. And for this, I am using a different uh, Jenkins file. So this is added uh, here in the Jenkins file. There is a PR analysis uh, Jenkins file. Uh, so basically, this is uh, kind of similar to the one we already did. 
and the difference is it will it will use a different the PR test environment for importing the API and tested testing it. It is different from the it is a separate one. Uh, it's not the dev overall. It's a separate uh, instance, and then it will do the test inside that, and then do the cleanup. So that is uh, a kind of a, a simple one. And let me do it. Let me add it here. And right. So okay. So I think we are good. We save it. And now it is uh, scanning through the repository and check whether whether there are any pull requests. So we don't have any pull requests right now. So um. So it is not doing anything right right now so let me do something again so i i did the break i i have broken the build now so let me fix it again so let's see i am adding it yes back and do the again Fixing and we will push. Right. So I I pushed to the push to the local repo, but I didn't uh, do the at the at the PR now. Uh, so I have to do something. Okay, uh, one more thing. So basically, uh, in my settings, uh, in in the repo settings, I have to do another uh, small thing. So basically, uh, under webhooks, I have to do PR-related ones as well. Enable PR-related webhooks as well. So here, uh, so there I have to select. Let me select individual events, and there I will select pull requests as well. So earlier we pushed uh, pu pushes the push event only. So now I am selected pull request as well. So I am updating the webhook now. And after that, I'm adding the PR to this. Sorry. Okay, so I'm adding, I can add the pull request now. So I'm creating the pull request. Right. Okay. And uh, if I go to this PR test, so you can see there is another build trigger. So basically, that is for that uh, PR that I have added. So it's it's running that particular Jenkins uh, Jenkins script and doing these tests, and then uh, and then uh, clean up the stuff. So basically, it's done. So, so in this PR, you can see something new. So basically, it's adding a check. So basically, it says this: uh, the Jenkins instance has called GitHub and informed Git that this commit is good. So that we can merge the pull request. So, so this is a better way than earlier. So that uh, the developer can be very, uh, I mean, confident that it's, it's not breaking anything in the even after uh, building the even after merging it to the Developer into the developer uh, into the original repository, and after build after merging that, you can even see that uh, master branch build is also triggered, and that one now is I think going to success because how because that is fixed now. Just the uh, build is success now, and uh, let me show you one more thing. And uh, again, uh, so in the in the settings, I can do something like this as well. So inside this, there are branches, and uh, so there are called branch protection rules. So from that, we can say that these checks are required when uh, before this PR submerge. So then, uh, if I tick this one, so then we must have this check success before merging a PR. So let me quickly do it, and then uh, sorry. The, okay, so I have to have a name. Uh, okay, so let me add a name here. Ah, so branch name should be master. Okay, this. Right, so so let me now again break this. Uh, so so here, let me break that again and see what let's see what happens. 
and I'm going to so I think you saw what it, what I did. So basically, I did the same thing. I broke this API. So basically, the test cases will be failing because I changed the you change the resource. So I'm at this uh, commit this again and push this. Okay, and now I'm adding a pull request again. And let's see what happens. Also, oh, this one is okay. It's a pull request, and I'm creating pull request. And let's see. So basically, uh, it should again. So now, uh, unlike before, we can't merge the pull request until this. Uh, until this uh, check is versus so basically it is holding us uh, before merging so so it's waiting for status to be reported and here uh, it is running the test now running the uh, build now and now the build is failed and so here you can, it says this checks are failed and even like before like before you can't merge the pull request until you fix this so let me quickly fix this again so I, i'm adding it again uh, so i'm pushing it to the same same pr so i already have a pr i'm pushing it to the same thing after fixing it Right, and uh, again it is running the test cases. Uh, should be added another. Okay, wait a second. Okay, so you build this here. And the... Right, so so now we can say so just we so says the, uh, the PR is good and we can run. So, so it's like this. So, so I think that concludes the demo. So, right, uh, let me go to the, yeah, so the question time. So we have a couple of minutes for some questions. So, um, so you, uh, so, so just something to remind. So you can, uh, uh, so and at the end of the webinar, there will be a survey. Uh, so that there are a couple of questions so can you can give us feedback uh, so uh, we are very, very uh, happy to hear your feedback uh, on yeah. this okay right so if you have any questions uh, you can ask now yeah that is uh, one question instead of using api ctl tool uh, yeah yeah is it possible to use product apis yeah it's uh, definitely it is possible so actually if i uh if i say the api ctl is already using the product apis uh, internally so it is entirely possible so basically the the only thing is you have to uh, have some uh, uh, kind of uh, you have to figure out i mean you have to figure out some uh, kind of uh, i mean not really figure out like uh, uh, you need to kind of know how to call the rest apis and stuff so uh, so there are already documentation uh, uh, so it is again possible no problem uh yeah there's another question uh, if uh, are both api spec and the api implementation promoted together via cicd or uh, can we promote them separately uh, if needed uh, separately if needed that is uh, if there's no change to api implementation but only a change to the api uh, spec uh, yeah so actually there uh, in my opinion there should be uh, there should be separate uh, ci cd i mean uh, so there can you i think you it's kind of up to the way that uh, the ci cd process is implemented so uh, so i think the better way is to have two different ci cd uh, pipelines for backends and api so basically it's like this like uh, so api uh, implement api implementations and the api front end so it's api manager is kind of two different things so api manager side will get changed only if you change the uh, kind of api interface 
but uh, the implementation can change uh, like uh, you you fix some bugs and etc so it is completely okay to have two different uh, kind of uh, ci cd processes yeah okay so i think uh, 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 yeah. we covered uh, what we uh, were planning so mm -hmm. then uh, thank you very much for joining and um, yeah so so you can uh, download and try out our api manager solution so, and uh, we have the chat, chat channel, Slack channel that you can ask uh, developer questions and any questions related to API Manager. And also we have this uh, GitHub repository. So you can, if you have any issues uh, while, while trying your trying the product, you can put there. And also um, for the demo materials, so this will be sent to you via email. And uh, so you can try out what we already uh, what we showed you. And uh, and yeah so uh, thank you very much and uh, so uh, we have another uh, webinar so we the next webinar will be uh, 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 they are in uh, 25th june so uh, we are inviting you to particip participate that as well so thank you very much